Sometimes I wonder how you can love me the way you do. Show me the way to your heart and hear me. Deep in my heart, I've been yearning for more. I have longed to see. As I hunger for your touch, and even when I feel alone, you're always there. I'm never alone. You rescued me from the dark when I was lost. You came, found. I want you to open your Bibles tonight to Ephesians chapter 5. 
Now, several nights ago, I talked about what it means to be filled with the Spirit. And tonight, we're going to talk about how to be filled with the Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to read from verse 18, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you for your word. Let every ear be anointed to hear and every heart receptive to receive all that heaven has tonight. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. You know, people come to the meetings and they want to be filled. We pray every service for people to be filled, and I watch people coming and they, they try so hard as though it's something that they got to do. You see people standing in line, you know, like they're really working hard as though they've got to do something to be filled, but that's not what it's about. Being filled with the Spirit has got nothing to do with the, with the mind taking a hold and your physical body trying to do something. You know, I was raised in Pentecost, and I used to watch in the church, and because my father had to teach them different, but people would grab a hold of somebody who wanted to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. They would get him in. First of all, he had to kneel down. Then somebody come along and said, no, no, you shouldn't kneel, you should sit. And then the other one said, no, you should stand. So now the poor guy's already confused. He doesn't know if he should sit, kneel, or stand. And then they have two guys on either side. And the one guy's saying, let go, brother, let go. The other one's saying, hold on. So... You can understand the total confusion. Now, he's coming to be filled, and he's standing there. One is on this side. Hold on. Okay, on to what? This one's let go, let go of what? And this, you know, sit. Okay, you need to kneel, stand. I mean, it's just total confusion. And then they, they, they right here, they praying so loud, the poor guy's going deaf. They praying so loud, they spitting, spits covering his face, you know. I mean, he's getting showers of blood. Look, when you're a kid, you see everything. And then somebody will grab them and start to shake them, you know. Brother, receive, you know. Anybody ever seen what I'm talking about? Wow. Okay, so people come to be filled with the Spirit, and you feel so sorry for them because they're trying to do it the wrong way. You've got to open your heart to be filled with the Spirit. The same way you get born again. The same way you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can't come down here and beat yourself and make a big noise and then suddenly you get saved. It's by faith you come and you accept salvation that was purchased for you on Calvary's cross. You can't earn your salvation. You can't buy your salvation. You come in faith to receive. It's the same way with this. anything you receive from God, healing, blessing, and his Holy Spirit. And he's waiting to give it to you. More, he wants to give it to you more than you even want to get it. We had a brother, bless his heart, in the church that I grew up in, and he tried to get the Holy Ghost for 17 years. 17 years. And it became a badge of honor. How are you doing, Brother Freddy? Tearing, still tearing, <laughs> Waiting. And you know what? He would not yield. He would not yield. You tell him, brother, just open your heart and let God fill you. And he would not. You say, just open your mouth and just begin to speak. Let the Lord just begin to fill you. He wouldn't. Well, I want to be filled, but I don't want to roll on the floor. I want to be filled, but I don't want to act like that person earlier, running around the building. You couldn't pay me to do that. When the Holy Ghost touches you, you'll do it for free. So, when you come to be filled, you have to empty yourself. If I bring a glass of water and say, please, could you fill it? If it's already filled, you're going to look at me, are you crazy? The thing's already filled. 
You can only fill something that is empty. Somebody said, what must I empty myself of? You have to empty yourself of yourself. John said, I must decrease, he must increase. Lord, I come to you. You have to humble yourself. You have to get rid of pride. You have to get rid of sin. Well, it all starts at the new birth. The things of the world, the desires that are not of God. And you've got to deal with the things of the past because there are many people asking God to fill them, but they have too many unresolved issues that they've never resolved. And so the devil uses a condemnation and says, God's not going to fill you because of this, that, and that. And until you resolve that, until you go to a place where you lay it on the altar and say, God, I need you to come and burn this out of me. I don't want the devil beating me up the rest of my life. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you come and you lay that at the foot of the cross. And you repent and you ask God to forgive you. But then by faith you receive. You receive, you get up, and then you go. And then when the enemy comes to try to accuse you, you say, listen, you better shut up right now. Because Jesus took my sin, he took my burdens, he rolled them away, he took them away, his blood washes me clean, and I have a right to come and ask God to fill me with his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God will not hold his, withhold his Holy Spirit from anyone. He's looking for people that are hungry. He's just looking for people that are thirsty. And I've seen the power of God fall in the most remotest places of the world where they didn't even know what I did. They didn't even know what I did. A couple of years ago, I made a trip. It took me four days to get there. I flew. I had to fly to Australia and then go to Papua New Guinea and stay the night and then go to North Solomon Islands and then drive through 11 rivers to get to this kingdom. And I stayed with the governor. And they were Catholics. I didn't even know they were Catholics. I brought one of those iPods and I, I wanted to bless them with. So I showed them the meeting and, and the governor put one of the earbuds in his ear and, and his wife put it in her ear. She couldn't even speak English. And 10 minutes, they're watching. She falls out in the kitchen floor <laughs> under the power. And the governor just slides down and the seat, tears rolling down his cheeks. So I had a meet with the king of that region and I had a several day meeting with him and... Uh, the governor says, can we bring some people to the house tonight? I said, sure, sure, you bring people to the house. The generator only worked three hours, and you, you, you didn't have hot water to shower in. And when I went to go shower, you do it in the dark, and you look up at the walls moving. But I didn't even look to see what it was. I just went in there to shower. I'm not going to mess with the wildlife, you know. <laughs> I just prayed. I said, Lord, hallelujah, help me, Jesus. Otherwise, you would never shower. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> when the wall moves, it's not wallpaper. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and so I go out into w with this area that uh, what, what shocked me was the governor said he used to run a, a bar, but they closed it down. I thought, well, that's great. Man, and there's 60 people sitting there. They come from the village. They're just sitting there, and I just get up, and I just go for it. I start preaching about the woman at the well and what happened to her, and then I start talking about this river that God has, and I give the altar call. Everybody raise their hand to get saved. I pray the prayer, lead them all to Christ, and they all accept Jesus, Lord and Savior. And then I say, now who wants the baptism of the Holy Spirit? They all raise their hand. I say, in the name of Jesus, be filled. They all fall out, rolling on the ground, speaking out the tongues, jumping up and down, running around the building. I thought, they must have been in a hundred of my meetings. <laughs> Hadn't been in one. Hadn't been in one service. But when the Holy Spirit comes on people, they react the same way. It doesn't matter what their language is. Amen. They react the same way. It's got nothing to do with culture. We've watched the Japanese respond to the Spirit of God. We've watched the Scandinavians respond. I've watched the Egyptians respond. I've watched the Israeli respond. I've watched the Italians respond to the presence of God. The Germans, the Dutch, the French, the Argentinians. I've watched them all come under the anointing. They all act the same way. They all respond the same way. 
the Africans, the Australians, the Kiwis, the New Zealanders, all respond, the Singaporeans, the, Hong, those in, the Chinese in Hong Kong, come on, people are people, and God comes to fill the hearts of people with his spirit. And when God touches people, they go walking, leaping, and praising God. I mean, you don't have to tell them. You don't have to tell them. If God touches you, you can walk and leap. I mean, they get touched by the fire of God. The first thing they start doing is walking and leaping, praising God. Gloria a Dios. Fuego de Dios. Rio de Dios. La palabra de Dios. El gozo de Dios. That's about all I know. Hallelujah. So you have to empty yourself. Whew. I tell people, you know, when you come and you ask God to fill you, you must expect to be filled. You come expecting. I mean, whether you're here or not, you're watching my television, you go to your pastor, say, I want to be filled. You go expecting. You didn't go there, well, let me test him. People come stand in the lines like this. And I want to stand in front of them and go, Why oh, they stand like this? I was preaching in Tennessee, and, and, and a Tennessean said to me, Go ahead, preacher, knock yourself out. <laughs> like I was going to pray for him. I must knock myself out and pray. I thought I'll knock you out right now. It's like my problem to get you filled. It's not my problem. It's not my problem. You've you got to get hungry. You've got to get thirsty. You've got to empty yourself of yourself. You've got to come to God expecting to be filled. I can't. Please. I'm just the messenger here. And if you can't get filled here for whatever reason, because you're shy and you're embarrassed, and you don't want to be seen on television. You don't want other people to see you. At least when you get home, get down by your bed, kneel by your bed, and say, Lord, please, will you please fill me? But I promise you, we're not going to judge you. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you get filled with God himself. And then your whole life is going to change because it's the Holy Spirit. So you, he's going to keep you in that place. If you let him. And you won't do anything to grieve him or upset him. It must be a migration. In verse 20 of chapter 3, he says, Now to him who by in consequence of his action... Of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think. You become flooded with God himself. Verse 19 tells you that in the Amplified. God fills you with his presence. To be filled with the Spirit is to be filled with his presence. 
You're not going to live like the world. There's things you won't listen to anymore. There's places you won't go anymore. There's things you won't watch anymore. There's activities you won't partake of anymore. You can't have both. You, you can't have being filled with the Spirit and the things of the world. It's impossible. It's the Holy Spirit. And He is holy. Can you say amen? Now, one thing that the Lord said to me years ago, He said, when you pray for people to be filled... He said, remember, my word says, with joy shall you draw forth water out of the wells of salvation. He said, when I fill them with my spirit, I will fill them with my presence, and I will fill them with my joy. I will fill their cups to overflowing. Everybody say this after me, with joy shall I draw forth water out of the wells of salvation. And where is this well? It's not up here in your head. It's here. Put your hand right here on your belly. Put your other hand on your head. Notice the difference. It doesn't come from here. From here, from your innermost being. Out of your innermost being shall flow forth rivers of living water. Now, here's the thing. Listen, listen carefully. When God fills you, he doesn't just fill you and then put a lid on you and just put you on the shelf. Have you ever had a, a bottle that's been closed, just stood there for a year or two? No one's getting any help from that water. That's how many Christians are. They forgot to come and fill them, but they're just sitting there. This is a whole process. When he fills you, then you go and empty yourself. Then you get thirsty and hungry all over again. Then you come to him expecting him to fill you again. Then he fills you. Then you go empty yourself. It's an ongoing process of being filled and emptied, filled and emptied. Filled and emptied. He fills you up to pour you out. To a lost and dying world. Because they need what you have. Too many churches that are spirit filled in America hold their water. The water doesn't go out of the congregation. The only way that you can stay refreshed is to continually be poured out. He fills you up. To pour you out, to fill you up, to pour you out. That's why Ephesians 5 and 18 says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled. Be ye being, being, continual. Be ye being filled. You can be more filled or less. 
I mean, look back at your Christian walk and say, I was really filled then. And then there was a time I wasn't that really filled. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. If he fills you up and fills you to the top, to overflowing, then it's going to pour out of you everywhere you go. You won't be a dead issue. You won't be something that just comes along and drains everything. Everywhere you go, you will carry the very presence of Jesus. Brother Rodney, does it bother you with all the outbursts? No. I've worked enough cemeteries in my years. I've worked enough graveyards. Lord have mercy, I determined a long time ago, I ain't sitting up with the dead no more. Oh, my God. I'm not sitting up with the dead anymore. Thank God for his life. Thank God for his joy. Thank God for his peace. Thank God for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let the dead bury the dead. Yeah, let me just say that. I won't say this to you right now because some people think I'm worked up emotionally. I actually am very calm. Listen. I really am. I'm very, this is not an emotion of the mind. My mind's actually just observing. My heart is exploding with this. This is something that comes right out of here. Somebody said, well, he's real wound up tonight. No, absolutely not. I'm just chilled. Because it's not something that you work yourself into. This has got nothing to do with working yourself. This is what I feel. It's like the prophet of old said, it's just like a fire shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Ha! Sandorabo Sate. Etanabo Saya. Rabo Sotanabandera. Ribo Sataya. Woo! 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 Like fire. Like fire. Like fire. Like fire. Shut up in my bones. That fire! <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh! Hey! Hey! Shambles! Mirimato! Mirimato! Simple Woo! That like fire! Shut up in my bones! I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost!
Feuer! Schumacher! Rabastige! Rebo! René! You gotta run with fire across America! You gotta run with fire across this nation! One more time, America will be shaken by the hand of God. Come here, quickly. Bring her here. Help her, bring her, bring her, bring her. Woo! 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 Fire! Jesus. One preacher, he said, I know this is a move of God, but I don't want it in my church. He didn't even realize what he said. I know it's a move of God, but I don't want it in my church. The people sitting at home mocking what's happening here right now. Ministers of the gospel. Your life will be barren, I'm telling you right now. Be careful what you say. Just like David's wife. She was barren. Because she said to him, you're making a fool of yourself. You sit watching here and you mocking what's taking place as though this is something crazy. Be very careful for you will walk in a desert place and only the mercy of God will bring you back. This is not a move of man, but a move of the Spirit of God. Man cannot do these things. If you think you can do it, get a room full of people and try it. Only God can do this. And come and touch the young and the old and fill them with the joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. If you be seated, please, for a moment. Listen, I know what I'm talking about. The people mock this, but they run to the drugs and alcohol. Preachers. They're drinking themselves into stupor because they're under pressure, but they don't understand that God has a better way. And it's the new wine of heaven that he's pouring out tonight right here. The world can't touch this. The world can't not touch this. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, all across the room. You tell the Lord, you come to him, you say, Lord, I'm going to empty myself. And I come hungry and I come thirsty. And I come expecting to be filled. And I promise you, if you fill me, I will never hold on to it. But I will carry, I will be poured out. Pour me out, Lord, to a lost and dying world. 
that they may see Jesus. Just like the woman at the well, Jesus met a woman at a well, talked to her about a well, and she became a well. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed all across this room, if you've come in this place tonight, you fit in any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you, or you're watching in your homes by way of television. What would happen if tonight was your last night on the earth? If tonight you put your head on your pillow and you breathed out your last breath, where would you go? I want you to know there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. What we're feeling here tonight is a little taste of heaven. The Lord loves you. And he stands with arms wide open. He says, come unto me, all you that labor in heaven, lay I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And tonight, if you've never given your life to Jesus, you need to just stop what you're doing. You might never have another opportunity. This very night, your life could be required of you. It's appointed and the man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. The Lord is calling people tonight. It's time to surrender you all and give your heart to Jesus. Secondly, maybe you've come into this place and years ago you gave your life to the Lord, but you've grown cold. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. There was a time when you were hungry and thirsty for God, but you just don't. I mean, you go to church, but it's not like it was. Other things have taken its place. Sometimes it's because things go wrong in the hearts of individuals. The Bible even tells us in the book of Hebrews to beware lest a root of bitterness spring up and, and defile you and defile many. The Bible even tells us to protect our heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life and, and you didn't protect it. You opened the door for the enemy and he came in. He came in just when you started going for God. You said, I'm going to go all the way and the enemy went after you and in many ways succeeded in holding you back. This could be totally hidden. No one knows. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust. The hidden things that clog the hearts of men and women. Tonight is your night to go free, to say, Lord, I want this out. I want this gone. You could be in church. You could be a deacon, elder, Sunday school teacher. You're singing the choir. It means nothing. You could even be a preacher. God is calling you to surrender afresh. He said, I will take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. He'll revive you again. He loves you. He doesn't condemn you. He loves you. He says, come. Maybe it's not something hidden. Maybe it's outward. Something that you tripped. You were tripped by the enemy and you fell into it and other people know about it and the devil uses it against you to keep you in a place of guilt and condemnation so that you never feel you can do anything for God because the moment you press in, the enemy reminds you, says, hey, you better sit down and be quiet. We know what you did last summer. We know what you up to. We know what happened last August. There are more people paralyzed by the lies of the devil than you can ever imagine. And they deal with a guilty conscience. It's time to get that conscience clean. And you get it clean by the blood. The blood of Jesus will purify you. And the blood of Jesus will keep you pure. And the blood of Jesus will keep you holy. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's not outward. Maybe it's a storm that came against your life. Suddenly, I mean, you were going along, and then suddenly, uh, like a Mack truck from hell, the thing hit you. 
a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that just rocked your world. It like knocked the wind out of your sails. And you say, Brother Rodney, I don't know how that happened. I was serving God, and then suddenly this come from nowhere, and I just can't seem to get back on track. You know, the Bible speaks of three temperatures of our heart. We're either hot, lukewarm, or cold. And there are many lukewarm people that sit in the church. They're not hot, but they're not cold, but they're lukewarm. And Jesus said, I don't want you lukewarm. Either be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. He's talking to the church. He was not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. It's time to get on fire for God. It's time to leave the things of the world behind. It's time to stop dabbling one foot in the kingdom, one foot in the world. It's time to serve God with every part of your being. He calls you. And then lastly, maybe you've come into this place and you did give your life to the Lord in days gone by, but you're not sure. You're sitting here tonight, not sure. I'm not sure that I'm really saved. And tonight I want, I want to know. I must know for once and for all that I'm a child of God. If this is you and you fit into any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Would you please, right where you are, while well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed, quickly slip your hand up right now and say, pray for me. All across the building, just raise it up high. Hands are going up all across the building. Quickly, slip it up high. Young and old. I was five years old when I raised my hand and walked down that aisle. Slip your hand up right now, up in the rises on the main floor, quickly. God is calling you. It's time to leave the world and the things of the world behind. God's got a higher call for you. There's a higher life. You, you don't need to live the low life of the world and sin and, and shame and guilt. But tonight he will come and wash you clean and put a robe on your back and ring on your finger and shoes on your feet. Tonight he's going to put the festive robe of honor on you. Tonight he's going to put that ring of authority on you. He's going to put shoes on your feet. Tonight the, the wheat fatted calf is going to be killed. There's going to be celebration. There's going to be singing. The prodigal has come home. Once you've raised you, but put it down. I want everyone to look at me in this section here, all the way up the rise. If you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included, quickly, slip the hand up right now and say, include me. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? This section, you didn't raise your hand. I've seen your hand already. Anybody else? Quickly, raise up high. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Right at the back. Yes. Anyone else? Quickly, this section. Didn't raise your hand. You want to include it. Thank you, young lady. God bless you. Another hand back there. Anybody else? Another hand, another hand, another hand, another hand. Anybody else? Quickly, raise up high. Slip your hand up right now. Right up in the riser. Thank you. Yes, yes. Anybody else? Just slip it up. This section. Young lady over there. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, up in the riser. Yes, God bless you. This section, you didn't raise your hand. Want to be included. Quickly, slip your hand up right now and say, include me. I want everyone that raised your hand all across the building to stand to your feet right now. If you raise your hand, stand right now. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet right now. I want you to come from where you are and come stand right around the altar. We're going to lead you in a prayer. Tonight is your night of salvation. Come. 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 He's calling you now. Come right now. Come right here in the middle. Come. Come right here in the middle. Come. Come, come, come. There's others. Get up now. Come. Jump up now. Come, come. There's others. Come, 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 come. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. He calls you. Come. Jesus is calling you now. Don't just sit there. Jump up right now. Run down that aisle. Come. 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 It's a new day. Woo! Go. Woo! Come. Oh. Jesus.
quickly there's others jump up from where you are push through the crowd on the row jump up and come down here right now before we pray Now, the people that would watch and say, I don't understand how these people come. Ministers will critique the service. How is that possible? But they don't understand. They're greater than me. And greater than I is here. It's the Holy Ghost. And he's touching people's hearts. And he's drawing people to himself. Tonight is a night of salvation and freedom. If you mean busy with God, I want you to look at me right now. If you mean busy with God, God means busy with you. And tonight we're going to pray a prayer. One prayer fits all. And tonight I'm just asking you to surrender your life to him. Say, Lord, I want to give you every part of me right now. And I'm not taking them back. And tonight I'm taking all of you. This is going to be a new day. If you've come for the first time, you've come to recommit your life, or you come to make sure, you're going to leave your knowing I'm a child of God. Amen. Amen. If you're watching in your homes as we pray with them, you could pray the prayer along with us. I want you to close your eyes right now. Raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from, and pray this out loud. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So, Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me, cleanse me, change me, fill me, use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this night on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I receive the free gift of salvation. I'm born again. I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now lift your hands and just thank him right now. Father, I pray that you would seal them now by your blood and by your spirit. That on that day, not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. In Jesus' name, I break every bondage, every addiction, everything of the world. I break it in Jesus' name. And from this night, they'll serve you, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, I have a gift for every single one of you. If you will turn this way, follow Pastor Alan for a few moments, please. Then you can come right back. We're going to be praying for people. Just turn and go through this way for a few minutes. Everybody, just turn and go. Come on, people of God, give the Lord praise. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time.
all heaven rejoices over one sinner that comes to repentance. Oh, how did you get glory to God? Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Oh, 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 oh. Huh. 